Hi, I'm Erica Del Sordo. Welcome to today's talk with Erica. It's so nice to have you here on this second episode of season two. Thank you for subscribing to my YouTube channel and audio podcasts. So today's show features my friend, Gina Martell. At the age of 24, Gina began working in radio in 1984. Three years later, she was hired by 93.9 FM Love 94 and began what she thought would be a lifetime career as an on-air radio personality. After more than 20 years as an on-air personality and voiceover talent, Gina decided in 2006 to end her full-time radio career and pursue a voiceover career. Gina has been the voice of Discovery Channel shows, Animal Planet, Penthouse, Playboy, HBO, and several other channels and programs. As the music industry continued to evolve, Gina's life turned upside down. She met her now husband, and when he gifted her with a seminar with motivational guru Tony Robbins for her 50th birthday, Gina decided right then and there that her next journey involved being a life coach. Gina volunteered for Tony Robbins on his fire team for a few years and helped walk thousands of people across fire to their own transformations myself included. Now she has a successful coaching business and it involves horses. Gina, welcome. Hi, Erica. Wow. I'm so proud of you. This is awesome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for being on here with me. Yes, yes. This podcast was born out of COVID, uh, unfortunately, but fortunately, you know, I think 2020 was a blessing and a curse for many people, right? I totally, you know, that's what I've been saying. I, I've actually started my own YouTube channels and I've been talking about that. You know, don't just think, you know, think about the silver lining in things. You know, uh, I found that our animals are happy because we're home with them. Our kids are happier because we're home with them. Um, you know, we've got more time together. We're having to figure things out. Some relationships are doing better. Some relationships are ending as they should have a long time ago. Careers are changing. I mean, it's just a bit an amazing thing. So I don't find anything bad about it at all. Yeah. No, 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 no. Uh, yeah. There has been more positive. Now, of course, unfortunately, I've known a few people who've gotten COVID. Um, yeah, that's and sad. that's the, that's the, the huge downside, of course. But what the pandemic did for everyone was, uh, like I said, a blessing and a curse. Um, so talk to me because I know you've got different levels of your coaching. And I know that you've also got a spiritual coaching um, aspect of what you do. Yeah. So my life completely changed. It, it really did. And when Justin, my husband, uh, you know, took me and introduced me to, uh, you know, unpa unleash the power within the Tony Robbins uh, seminar that a lot of people go to, I was so taken by it and so impressed with uh, Tony and his techniques. And, you know, in college, I did some psychology and I, I worked in the medical field way before I got into radio. And I just really always had that interesting connection to try to you know, help people and guide them. And, you know, people would call me on the air and have these long conversations <laughs> with me, you know, and I felt like the bartender usually, you know, trying to help them <laughs> through things. And, you know, <clears throat> I was just, I didn't realize what I was doing and I was really forging a new path, you know, for myself. Um, the horses came along because I have been a horse fanatic my entire life. I mean, I always say this, my mom, you know, God rest her soul said, I was born winning. So, um, and I was, you know, and so it's just one of those things. I mean, I, I grew up with horses and I, I used to train and barrel race and show and got a bunch of ribbons and trophies. And, and then I took a break and I got into radio and I did that for, you know, a long time. Um, and then we moved to, we moved to Georgia. We love it up here, but Yes, we are coming back to Florida. Because, because, oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be closer to you, actually. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that'll be fun. So, yes. um, yeah, I, you know what, winterizing horses is exhausting. I don't know how people in Colorado do it because it's just so so cold. I didn't even know that was a thing. Winterizing <clears throat> horses. Yeah, there's a lot that goes into that because, no. um, yeah, and you know, when, so when the when the cycle, you know, the, the life cycles now, we go to winter, we fall, you know, all the days start getting shorter. That's when their winter coats start growing and they get those big old woolly weather coats. Well, they're Florida horses. They were rescues and I adopted Aww. them. Yeah. Uh, from the SPCA who I'm eternally grateful to. And, um, 
so, you know, they had to kind of get those big, thick, woolly coats. And then of course I had to go buy coats and it's, it's, it's exhausting. I mean, I just turned, uh, dare I say 60 in November. Did you really? <laughs> Did you yeah. really? Really? You, you look like you're like 20 years younger. Oh my God. I love you. Thank oh you. My, you do. Thank you. I'm not um, blowing smoke up there. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing something I appreciate right. That. It's the horses. I really believe it's the there horses. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, it's just, you know, it's when we, we've had uh, temperatures in the 19s and 20s, you know, so water buckets freeze, you know, uh, you, the meteorologist, I'm sorry, they never get it right. <laughs> you no, know? I have to tell you, and I, I have to agree on that, not let you just hang up in there because we do that all, we deal with that all the time, by the way, over here. And I, God bless them. But, but yes, there's a storm coming. We change all of our plans and it's a beautiful sunny day. And, it's and like, what happened there? <laughs> what? And they get paid no matter what. So, you know, <laughs> Yes, but, um, we had the same conversations. Yes, I know. But I mean, and they mean well. I think they mean well, but they just always get it wrong. And it makes a difference. It makes a difference whether I'm going to blanket my horse because it's going to be 29 as opposed to, well, it's really only going to be 40, but we're saying it's 40, but it's really going to be 29. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it just, it's, it's just, it's a lot. I'm up at, you know, 6 a.m. out there in the cold weather and feeding them. And it, it's a lot. But very worthy. I love it. And, um, I've, I've rambled off on the weather now, but <laughs> it's gonna, I was, I started to tell you the reason I, I added the horses to my coaching right. is because when we moved up here, I did have the intention originally of getting back into my horses. I really want to start riding again. And there's a, there's a tack store. There's a bunch of them up here. And the one that I go to uh, one day, the, the manager, she was having a really rough day and I walked in and I was getting some stuff. And, and so, you know, she came up and she started talking to me and I said, Hey, and I gave her some advice, some coaching advice. And she said, Oh, what, what do you do? And I go, well, I'm a, I'm a life coach. And she goes, Oh, give me your card. <laughs> so I gave her my card and she says, and you love horses. I said, yes. Yeah. She goes, you have to become an equine assisted life coach. I'm like, Oh, what is that? <laughs> you mean I can work my horses with my life coaching? Oh my God. That's, oh, wow. that's my path. That's my path. And everything just fell right. You know, when you're in, you know, we talk about a little bit of a spirituality when, when you're in alignment with everything you're supposed to do, all the cogs click right into place, you know, like that movie field of dreams, everything yeah. falls exactly as it's supposed to. <laughs> and it did. Yeah. And I, I met a, a chiropractor up here who's awesome. And um, he just fell in love with what I was doing. And he's connected me with so many people. I, all my business, wow. all my clients are on referral. And I've had a lot of clients. And it's great. I've been doing this for 10, 10 years now. Wow. And I, I love it. So I went to Wisconsin. I took this course. Uh, my teacher is Pam Kacklemeyer. She's amazing. And she created actually the whole, she's a therapist, but she created the whole coaching thing for horses wow. and she works with native Americans and she, te you know, so you go up for a hands on and it changed everything for me. It changed every way that I handled my horses. Um, you know, I used to be one of those competitive equestrians. I'm no longer that I, I work with the energy of the horse. I communicate with my horses. I can actually hear them and they can hear me. And it's, it's all part of that spiritual stuff that I've added to my life. And it's amazing. I'm so grateful for it. I love that. I love that. That's amazing that you, I mean, just a true, you've incorporated what you love and what you're good at and you've made it a, a business. And so you're, you're making money and you're helping people at the same time and you're loving what you do. I love that. I absolutely love that. Yeah. I think, I think that's everything in life too. You know, yeah. if you, if you wake up and you want to do what you do, mm -hmm. then you don't, you don't work a single day in your life. Exactly. Exactly. Now your kids, are they helping you out? How are they doing? <laughs> oh my God. My twins are 30. Get I, out. I cannot believe and now they I just feel turned old. 30. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 30. My daughter's getting married in May. She's got no, a great wow. guy. The irony, the, the really funny part is that, okay, so my husband, his name is Justin. We went to high school together. 
and he was a, a captain from Miami Dade Fire, right? Mm -hmm. And he was also part of the U Star team. Mm -hmm. My daughter met a Justin, who's also half Polish. Although Justin's my Justin's all Polish, but her Justin's half Polish. Works for Miami Dade Fire. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> that's kind of that's weird, right? Weird. <laughs> Yeah, yes. it is weird. But and they have the same taste. They hate olives. They hate pickles. They, oh, I'm that's like, funny. How did that happen? I mean, but it is so is so he's only to you. Guy. That's yeah, the thing, I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I that's I wonderful. love it. He's a great guy. And um I see that marriage lasting forever, honestly. I really that's do. really nice. I love <laughs> hearing that. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, you know, only because I had done the uh, fire walk with you guys at your first home in Georgia. I think you're somewhere else now, right? Yes. We're okay. in Woodstock, Georgia. Woodstock. Mm -hmm. I love it there too. But you were somewhere else when I had visited you and we did the fire walk and you were telling me that both you and Justin were on the, the fire team with Tony Robbins. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were in Jasper, Georgia. Right. Uh, is where you came. And uh, we oh, were renting at, too. at Cottage. <laughs> yeah, it was a cool cabin. And um, yeah, so when Justin and I started dating, like I said, he was with Miami Dade Fire, but he was also working part-time with Tony Robbins mm -hmm. as his uh, fire, uh, fire assistant, fire captain assistant, and then became fire captain, okay? Mm -hmm. um, once I went to UPW and I fell in love with being a life coach, um, I said, well, I want to, I want to learn how to do this. I really want to be able to walk people on fire. I just think it's such a cool thing. It's a metaphor for stepping into your fears and stepping into those, those walls and those, uh, obstacles sometimes that we put in front of ourselves through our own limiting beliefs, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and so we started, we started traveling. And I, we, we went to Italy, we went to London, we went to Australia, we went to, I mean, oh God, we went to everywhere and, and walked thousands of people, you know, and I, I learned so much and we made, we made great friends and it's been really amazing. So now I incorporate the fire walks into my practice as well. And you did it and you loved it. Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering <laughs> if you're still doing it. Yes. Yeah. It was yeah. fun. That hurt. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. <laughs> no, it was good. It was it was okay. That was I really enjoyed that. It was uh, it was a great weekend. I got to visit my friend, and I got some coaching in the process. We had a great time. We, we did. did. So you are still doing the fire walks with yes. the, the horse uh, clinics. Yeah. So what right. I do is I you know I have packages that I uh, use because it's just easier for people. You know, mm -hmm. coaching you have to come out of pocket to pay for my rates. You can't, I don't run through insurance cause I'm not a therapist, you know? Right. Um, right. But you know, I'll start working with somebody and usually we're, we're going to work about 90 days, maybe 120 days at this point. Um, we spend a lot of time, you know, sitting and talking. I do special techniques with them. A lot of the same stuff that I did with you. Um, and then I incorporate the horses and the horses are really magical. I mean, they are, so when you show up at my property and you're going to, we're going to start a session, I have the horses in my front yard. I have a big uh, acre and a half in my front yard. Nice. I have like four acres on my property and um, I leave you out there and I'm standing off to the side and whichever horse chooses to work with you is going to walk up to you. Oh, I love that. I let them choose. And then uh, they kind of, well, I, get, I can kind of watch their body language and kind of see how they're communicating with you and how you're responding to them. And I, and I know already what the problem is, what we're going to work on. So the horse is the most honest thing you'll ever have in your life. They don't care. Like a dog, you know, is all about unconditional love. They'll love you. And they, even if you beat the dog, you know, and you go, oh, I'm sorry. He'll still crawl up to you and still want to be your friend. The horse is like, yeah, take a walk. They, they, they don't care about that because they're not out to try to make you their friend. They want you to be their friend. They're hoping you're going to treat them nicely. But some people don't. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have such, so many abused and neglected horses. And people like the SPCA have to pick them up and feed them so that they get some meat on their bones again. Gosh. Yeah. So, um, so once we start working together, um, we'll get to a point where I'll start bringing in the horses and it's all about empowerment and confidence and connection. 
And a lot of people don't realize that the horse really, truly wants to connect with you. But sometimes we don't know how to do it. Sometimes we don't know how to connect with our, with people or other animals in our house. You know, we just don't, our hearts are closed off, you know, in that way. So my job is to open, open your heart again and get you going and let, get you letting go of everything and forgiving Forgiving is a huge thing. And some people are like, I can't forgive so-and-so because they did this. I'm like, no, it's not about condoning what they did. Right. It's about forgiving and letting, letting it go, taking the weight off of you right. so you can move forward, you know? Right. So once I, once I get the horses in there, I may put somebody in my round pen. And mostly I work with women and I work with children as well, mostly women from abusive backgrounds. And, you know, I teach them how to tell the horse I work with the herd mentality and I teach them the herd mentality so that they're actually communicating directly with the horse. It's yeah. really interesting. It mm -hmm. is really interesting. I've never seen anything like this. Everyone's heard of therapy dogs, I think, but yeah. never therapy horses, at least I didn't. So this is wonderful that you're doing this. It's something new for everyone and clearly it's working like a charm. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's really great. And then I decided finally um, to write a book. <laughs> yes. And I want to get that because I know you just uh, co-wrote a book with your colleague and equine specialist, Deborah Johnson. So tell me about how you met Deborah, your new book. This is all very exciting. When's it coming out? Tell me everything. Well, okay. So you've known me for a while and um, you know how it is, you know, working in, in radio, it's kind of crazy. You don't have a lot of time <laughs> <laughs> for anything, <Yeah. laughs> especially when you're a single mom. And, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've written probably five books over my career and never finished one of them. And once I started doing the coaching, it just, like I said, everything clicked into place. And I was like, I really want to write a book, but I wasn't sure who I was going to write it with, what I was really, you know, what path I was going to take with it. Mm -hmm. Well, last year I was invited to come back to my, my class in Wisconsin, uh, come back as a speaker, right? Wow. So- yeah, so I went back to talk about my techniques and what I use because she's got a, a class of students and people, and so she wanted you know some of her other students to show up and and show how they do stuff. Well, there's a there was a girl there named Deborah, and we had met the year before at the class, and we hit it off. But we really hit it off in this second this last year because Deborah did a whole thing on energy, right? Because we are all energy. And my, my spiritual journey has been growing and growing and growing and growing. And I've added so much stuff to it that, you know, now I implement it in with my coaching and it just works really, really well. But anyway, um, she was, um, I noticed that Deborah had some gifts, definitely some little spiritual gifts. And we were just really connecting on this weird level. And it was really interesting because uh, the other girl that, that was with us, she, she and I had rented an Airbnb because we were going to be up there for about four days. And Deborah came over to the house and we were having a glass of wine and I'm sitting, I'm sitting by the fire pit and Deborah looks down and she says, you know, there's a little black cat by your feet. <laughs> and I went and I looked down and there was a, a little black ball of fur by my feet. And the other girl that was with us, she goes, I don't see a cat. I'm like, you can't see the, the cat's right there. I have chills. Goes, I don't see a cat, but Deborah could see the cat. So in my in my book, I mentioned to my friend Deborah, who also sees black cats, you know, <laughs> when I do. <laughs> but she and I just really connected, and uh, we started Ooh. calling each other because, you know, there's very few people. There's becoming more, but there's few people you can really talk about this stuff too, because I think that you're into voodoo and you're weird and you're crazy, <laughs> right. which I'm not, I'm not, but you know, these are my personal experiences. And so, um, <clears throat> Deborah one day just flip it and we said, you know, God, we have so much synergy and we believe the same way about the horses and everything. We need to write a book. And I went, okay. And she goes, well, I mean, not right now. I go, no, when is now a good time? Yes. <laughs> Let's do it. So she was like, oh, holy crap. <laughs> she was like, you, really, you mean it? And I was like, yes, I do mean it. Let's get going, you know? So we started That's having awesome. meetings and outlines and all that stuff. And before I knew it, everybody was like, 
in love with this idea. And so I pulled a lot of my clients, pulled a lot of stories of her clients, our own personal journeys. We also put it, uh, an area in there about animal communication and why it's, why it's a real thing. Um, and also how to have a bond, a real connection with your horse, build a true friendship. And so um, that's what the book is, is pretty much about. And before I knew it, it was like I had a professional editor because uh, I couldn't edit, but you know, I found a really good professional one. And then uh, a friend of mine who has an independent uh, publishing company, he, he said, what are you doing? I go, oh, I'm writing this book. He goes, let me see it. And he read it and he goes, oh, I really like it. I'm going to publish it. I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't even have to go through That's amazing. the paths that, you know, most people have to go through. And so um, it's getting published and I've got a beautiful book cover. I sent you some of the pictures and uh, I have a book meeting. I have an author meeting greet this Sunday here in Woodstock at a really cool little spiritual, sh spiritual shop called um, Forever in a Day. And I'm just going to do some pre-sales and stuff like that. But the book should be coming out. We're hoping end of February beginning of March. It's going to be an ebook um, and then probably some print, but I'm, I'm definitely going to do an audio version of it as well. Do you need someone to read that? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Who could I pick? <laughs> That's incredible. I am so proud of you and happy for you. And I can't wait to read your book. I can't wait till you live near me again. <laughs> I know, that'd be great. That's amazing to hear. That really is. Oh, that's yeah. fantastic. That is yeah. fantastic. So Thank what, you. what would you tell anyone listening right now? What would you like to add to this? What would you tell someone, maybe going through a hard time, kind of starting over in 2021, they don't know what's going on. They're kind of coming out of a bad time, let's say, maybe not someone who's coming out of a great time. <laughs> Many of us didn't come out of a great time, but, but what would you tell someone? A very mm. quick coaching session, very, very quick. Very quick. Okay. Um, you know, there's reasons for everything. There are no coincidences. And there's a lot of great books out there to read. I love to, fit, to um, follow the advice of Wayne Dyer. I, I'm a huge Wayne Dyer fan. Yes. I would say um, start meditating. Get quiet. Find your peace within. Spend some time with a horse. A horse can completely transform your life, you know. And just try to stay as positive and grateful for every little thing, you know, even through the hardest challenges, we get through them. It's like that fire. We go through the fire and we come out the other side and we are better. Gosh, is that true? Yeah. So try Thank to stay you. grateful. Yeah. So tell me where people can find you. Where can someone find, um, you know, your website? Where can they connect with you? And I do want to mention also that any links that we mention here, I'm going to have in the info section, both on the YouTube podcast as, and the audio podcast. So all of that will be written down. But uh, if you can go ahead and let us know, and then I'll put it up so everyone can see where they can find you and your awesome services. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, my website is uh, coachginamartel.net. You can also find me on Facebook, Coach Gina Martel. Um, and that's it for right now. Um, the YouTube channel is Gina Martel. And I've got a couple of videos on my website and you should be able to find them on, on YouTube as well. I kind of <laughs> stopped doing for a little bit, uh, but I'm going to get back into it you know, uh, cause I, I was having fun, you know, doing those. Yeah. And so, yeah, but I've just been like so insanely busy, uh, trying to get the book finished. And then, and then, you know, we're, we're listing this house in January, uh, the, like the 20th. So we're hoping to sell it and go find something, you know, maybe we can list it on here too. find it in the oh. info section. <laughs> <laughs> that would be wonderful. Acres in Woodstock. <laughs> oh, you know, it's a oh, perfect cool. location. Too. It's four miles from downtown. Wow. And it's got little that. houses around it. So it's kind of an anomaly. Like it's kind of like an odd, but it's so pretty. And we really love it. I've got these giant hundreds of year old trees from oh, the Civil War and beyond. Trees. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really, it's gorgeous. But That's beautiful. It's time to move down south where it's going to be a little bit warmer. <laughs> yeah, I can't blame you with that. I really can't. I just saw snow this year for the first time. Well, 
Christmas 2020 for the first time. And that's nice to see once, but I don't, you know, you don't want to live in that. I don't want to shovel anything. I want to get in the car and go. There's ice on everything. You have to melt everything. You can't drive down the road. You're sliding down the road. <laughs> well, like you know, live in. growing up in Florida, like you and I did, you know, there's no reason to learn to drive on ice because we have no ice. <laughs> Honestly, there's really no, no, I mean, no one's well-versed in driving on ice. Cause I was going to say rain. I don't mind. I can maneuver on wet right. pavement. You can't do anything on ice. There you go. No. <laughs> no, no, we do that. You know, it was real quick. It was really interesting because when we first moved up here and it was getting really cold, I mean, the winters have really radically changed up here. What I remember as a kid living in Lee County, Georgia, which is Albany, Georgia. Okay. okay. It, it got cold, but it wasn't like it is now. Now it's wet and rainy and you get the occasional snow flurries, but it's really mucky. So I don't like that. Yeah. No, I don't blame <laughs> you. I don't blame you. But I had to say, Woodstock, though, is beautiful. I remember four years ago, we went to Woodstock. I want to say it was for my birthday when I had visited mm -hmm. you. So it yeah. is beautiful there. So hey, we'll put up, yeah. you know, selling a house there, Woodstock. <laughs> hey, what's the, uh, what is the name of your book, by the way? It is called Horse Stories, The Healing Way Horse, Horses Teach Us Healthy Relationships. I love that. Okay. It's very true, too. It is. Who, who would ever think that a horse could transform you, but they really can. Any animal, you know, but that's amazing that horses, I mean, I, I can't wait to, when you're closer to me, because I'm not sure I'll make it up to you, but I would love to, I'd love to work with you again and work with oh. a horse. I would love that. You'll, you'll be so like, like some people, they, they'll start working with a horse, you know, the first day and they're like, okay, what's this voodoo stuff you're doing? How come you understand them? How come you, I'm like, it's what not voodoo. voodoo. I don't uh, know why people think that. I know, but you know, it's funny when a horse calls, when one of my horses calls a person out and the person says something to them and the horse knows that that person is lying my horse will stop and turn his head away from that person and look at me like they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's when I can say, okay, my horse has called you out. So what did you not tell him the truth about? And that, that creates that they have to really think about what they said, you know, mm -hmm. and, and ne it never fails. They're like, wow. Yeah. Maybe I wasn't really super honest about that. But then they're like, how come, how come he knew? Because they do. They just do. I love that. <laughs> and, and it's so true. It's so yeah. true. Yeah, it really is. Gina, thank you very much for being on my show. This was very, very nice. So inspirational and enlightening. And I'm so happy that we can get the word out about what you're doing for people. This is really amazing. Thank you. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm so happy to see you. Me and too. I miss, I miss some of my radio friends back in Florida. <laughs> I guess I'm one of them. <laughs> you are one of them. Yes. I know, it's funny. A lot of people run from radio. God love radio, but a lot of people run for their lives. <laughs> we <Yeah>. just do. <laughs> it's, gotten, it's gotten a little crazy. But anyway, thank you so much for having me on the show. And I will get you a book as soon as I get my hands on one. I love that. Thank you very much, Gina. Have a great evening. You too. See you soon. Thanks for listening to today's talk with Erica. Join me next week for another discussion with the experts who help make life easier. Please visit my website, ericadelsordo.com, where you'll find all of my social media platforms and more. And be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Once again, thanks for listening.